for this pass criteria, you don't need to do anything too complicated. You just need to write a nice, simple, well thought out explanation of the strengths and the weaknesses of different ways an organisation can approach the recruitment of staff, and then the strengths and the weaknesses of different approaches to selection. So if we look at uh, recruitment, first of all, recruiting internally versus recruiting externally is one simple way of defining these different approaches. And the strengths of recruiting internally include the fact that the employer knows the candidates they will be considering, and they should be aware of their strengths and weaknesses, their personality traits, and their suitability for the post they are trying to fill. An internal candidate will know the company and what it does and hopefully understand a little about the company culture. And an employer will not have to pay recruitment agency fees or pay to advertise the vacancy. But of course there are disadvantages or weaknesses to recruiting internally. The employer is recruiting from a very small pool of candidates and uh, they, will, they will never know what calibre of candidates might have been available from outside the organisation. The internal applicants who were uh, unsuccessful uh, may feel demotivated or slightly resentful of their colleague who was given the job. If the new job represents a promotion, uh, perhaps to a management role, it might be difficult for some people promoted internally to manage the people who had previously been their workmates. Now let's consider external recruitment. Strengths include being able to select from a very wide range of candidates. In certain roles a person from outside may be able to, to bring new ideas to the business and not be constrained by existing culture or established ways of working. And of course it avoids the problem uh, that some internal candidates may face having to manage people who had up till that point been their peers. But the weaknesses include uh, possible problems fitting in at a new company and building good relations with the people they have to work with. And of course it might, uh, might take longer for an external candidate to really establish themselves in a new organisation and think as well about the, the two different approaches to external recruitment. That is, using a recruitment consultancy or an organisation handling the recruitment themselves. Using a consultancy allows an employer to certainly draw on the consultant's expertise and of course simplifies the recruitment process from the employer's perspective. But of course these services have to, have to be paid for and fees are often 15 to 20 percent of the first year's salary. Now I'll explore a couple of different approaches to selection. First of all job interviews. Strengths include uh, allowing the recruiter and the potential employees to meet face to face. The recruiter can also assess the personality, the communication skills and the interpersonal skills of the interviewee. Interviews also give the employer and the candidate the opportunity to ask questions and explore different aspects of the job. On the downside, performing well at interview is certainly no guarantee that somebody will perform well in the job. And conversely, the best applicant may be somebody who is just no good at interviews. Subjective evaluation or interviewer bias might affect the interviewer's decision. Perhaps the interviewer is a keen football fan who builds a very good rapport with a like-minded candidate. And the interviewer may consciously or perhaps subconsciously make a decision about the candidate in the first few minutes and then just use the rest of the interview to validate that decision. Another approach to selection that you could write about in your assignment is personality tests. They can reveal a lot of information about a candidate which would be really difficult to assess by any other method. They give a deeper insight into how somebody might fit in with the company culture and with their co-workers. And when they are conducted properly, they should be free from bias. But on the negative side, a candidate may perhaps try to answer questions in a way which tries to deliberately influence the outcome of the test rather than just giving an honest answer. 
and setting and analysing the results of personality tests needs to be done by a trained professional, which can be expensive. If somebody uh, without the necessary expertise tries to do this, the results will be unreliable or perhaps even completely misleading.